What is going on, everybody? This is Mr. Tony Stark with The Weekly Rant. You guys are loving this series, and I am more than happy to keep ranting about things that just irritate the crap out of me. And it's just a perfect timing for this one this week because I just got done playing some Black Ops 2, and uh, I, I was playing against one of, you know, every single time I play this game, I feel like I run into the biggest D-bag there is in the game, and he's the guy that's running around in your spawn, camping you out, shooting you in the back whenever you spawn, coming up behind you, whenever you, you know, whenever you come into the game, he's hitting you with the, the kill streaks right off the bat, but that's not what we're going to talk about. Uh, the gameplay is some, some kill confirmed with the shotgun on uh, the map hijacked. Like I said, nobody cares about that either, so we're going to get right into the topic. As you can tell by the title, uh, we're going to be talking about boosting, and the reason people boost, why is it necessary, what's the point of it, and um, it's something that I think that I can shed a little bit of light on as far as the community goes. So you have to take a look at boosting in general. What is it? Boosting is uh, to cheat the game, to rank up whatever it might be, whether it's your gun, your player, you know, if you want to prestige, whatever that might be, is to boost those things up, rank them up you know, out of the game's actual mechanics. So you're using another player or you're doing something to manipulate the game so you're ranking up faster. Most of the time in Call of Duty, it's where one player throws down attack insertion, the other player uses whatever gun they want to rank up and shoots the other person in the head to get headshots. In this game, it's even more uh, a boosting problem because you have gold camo, you have diamond camo, you have these things that are hard to do. The challenges for each gun are hard to do. That's why I made the, the little troll video about how to unlock camos, because people are literally trying to find any way they can to unlock these camos, to rank their guns up, to have them gold, to have them diamond, to have, you know, the diamond knife, to have the diamond crossbow. But what is the point? Why do they want to do it? For me, I think it comes down to two reasons. The first one is, gamers are freaking lazy. People in general are just lazy. They don't want to work for themselves. They don't want to do what it takes to get the reward for themselves. They just want the reward. They want the reward without the work. And that spans everything. That's not just in video games, but it's apparent because we all are in this community and we can see it going on. We can see it happening game by game. People want their gold weapons. Why? Who the crap knows? Me, personally, when I get a gold gun, I don't even use it. This gameplay that you're watching is one game that I played after I got the shotgun gold. I hardly even use this gun anymore. It's like, okay, I got a gold, now what? Okay, I'm going to move to the next one. What am I going to do with the next one? I'm going to get that one gold. What's the point of boosting for these camos and boosting for your rank if you're still going to play the game the same way? You're going to use the next gun and then the next gun. And then if you come back to it and you only use one gun and you're, all your weapons are gold, you're probably going to be bored with the game by that point because you've probably, if you've got them legitimately, you've probably put days and days and days into the game and you're ready for something else. So what's the point? One, you're lazy. You don't want to work for it. Two, it comes down to how the game is set up. The game is built for us to achieve these challenges. And because of number one, us being lazy, we want the challenges without actually achieving them. So, the way the game is built, you have the guns, you can rank them up, you can prestige them, you can put your emblem on them, you can put your, your uh, clan tag on them, you can get different camos. If none of these customizations were available in the game, boosting would be non-existent. Why? Because there isn't a point to it. If you look back to GoldenEye on Nintendo 64, Team Deathmatch in GoldenEye, you'd spawn in, it was a free-for-all, whatever, if it, was, if it was teams. You'd spawn into the game, and that would be it. You would pick up guns as you ran around the map. Everyone's looked the same. All the guns were equally balanced. Everyone's did the same damage. If you picked up a shotgun, it did this. If you picked up a machine gun, it did this. They all looked the same. There wasn't any, you know, customization. The only thing you could change is how your player looked. You could be one of the different characters in the movie. If Black Ops, if Call of Duty, if Halo, if any of these things, these first-person shooter games were like that, if there was no customization, there would be no boosting going on inside multiplayer. Why? Because there wouldn't be a point. Everyone would be the same. Everyone would be the same level. Everyone's guns would look the same, and it would not be a problem. But because we require, we require customization, because we need these things, Boosting has become an issue because people don't want to work for it. They want to have all the, the fancy stuff and they don't want to actually achieve what the game has set out. 
So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to have these people ruin the game by boosting to get all this stuff so they look cool just so we can have gold camo, just so we can have this? The answer is yes, of course it is. We, we want we want the, the customization. We want to be able to, you know, make our player as much like our personality as we possibly can. So yes, the answer is we need the customization because technology has advanced. What we don't need is people manipulating the system. Okay, so when it comes down to it, when you see these people boosting, when you see this, what's the first thought? Oh, these people are cheating, these people are doing whatever. Well, it has to do with their personality. It has nothing to do with the game. Ultimately, yes, the game is, is encouraging it because of how the challenges are being set up, but that doesn't change the player's character. For me personally, if you're a booster and you're a cheater and glitcher in, in any of these Call of Duty games, in any first person shooter, you're the lowest end of the of the gaming, you know, life cycle. You're on the same level as the people that grief my Minecraft server. I have no respect for you whatsoever. And and in fact I'm sick of of listening to these these kids and on YouTube and on Twitter and all these people going, oh, I got my my diamond SMGs because I boosted in in free for all and you know, people hacking to get to tenth prestige. They played four hours of Black Ops two and their tenth prestige, and it's just like, what the crap is the point? If you're just gonna do that, if you're just gonna break the game, why play it at all? Does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel better about yourself? It shouldn't because you're pathetic. That's it. I'm done. I'm out.